Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Benjamin Unger. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Dermatology in the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York City. And today I'll be discussing the data for uh, topical reflumolas for the treatment of psoriasis from the phase 2b study. Here are my disclosures. So I want to start with a little bit of brief background. Uh, for the treatment of psoriasis, high-potency topical corticosteroids and vitamin D derivatives have generally been the mainstays of psoriasis treatment, certainly from the topical perspective, ranging uh, in anywhere from mild to severe patients. Topical calcineurin inhibitors are sometimes used off-label as well for sensitive areas. But the reality is that all of these treatments are associated with numerous side effects. Often multiple topicals are needed to treat different anatomical areas, certain sensitive areas, which can be confusing and put place a lot of burden on patients. And because of that and, and kind of the, the combination of those reasons, there, there is a need for safe, effective, non-steroidal topical treatments for psoriasis. And so it's with great excitement then that there was the approval of Ruflumilas 0.3% cream in July of, of this year, uh, with the indication for topical treatment of plaque psoriasis, including intertriginous areas in patients 12 years of age and older. And just briefly as a reminder, the mechanism of action for Ruflumilas is that it's a phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitor, PDE4 inhibitor. And so I'm going to go through the data from this study, the phase 2b trial of reflumolase cream for chronic plaque psoriasis. And I think it's useful to put these data into context as we think about using this in our practice, how we can use these data to inform what we counsel our patients, what expectations we can have in terms of how well it works, what kind of side effects to expect or at least think about, and similarly for patients to have appropriate expectations and consider uh, what kind of outcomes they can expect, at least in general, for their own treatment. The study designed for this trial was as follows. So the inclusion criteria included adults with mild, moderate, or severe chronic plaque psoriasis with an IGA or investigator global assessment score of at least two. So uh, that's mild or greater. Uh, there was also an inclusion criterion for a modified PASI score of greater than or equal to two and uh, anywhere from 2 to 20% body surface area. The study design was daily application of reflumolase cream or vehicle control for 12 weeks. And they looked at two different concentrations, 0.3% cream and 0.15% cream. I'm going to focus here uh, pretty much exclusively on the 0.3% cream because ultimately that's what was approved and will be relevant for our clinical practice. So the endpoints they looked at were the primary efficacy outcome of an IG of zero or one, so clear or almost clear after treatment at week six. There were several secondary outcomes to look at different aspects about clinical responses, intertriginous IGA, uh, modified PASI score, reduction in itch, uh, and then two additional patient reported outcomes, a psoriasis symptom diary score and a dermatology life quality index score as well. They also did assess outcomes at weeks two, four, six, eight, and 12, uh, but as I mentioned, the primary outcome was set at week six. So just an overview of the trial, um, not designed, but how this actually played out. So um, a bit over 300 patients underwent randomization, a bit over 100 were in, uh, received the reflumolast cream, the 0.3% cream, similar, similar numbers in the uh, vehicle control. We can see here that a pretty decent number, particularly in the reflumolast uh, group, completed the trial. So 94%, 79% in the vehicle as well. And I think it's important when we consider the outcomes to think about how many people actually got to the end of the 12-week study. It's certainly important to think about the, the demographics and other clinical features of the patients included in the study uh, to, to see and make sure that it's generalizable to our patient populations. So the mean age, we're, we're in the low 50s for each of the groups. Uh, certainly very important to think about the diversity of the patient population. So in this case, depending on the group, between 75 and 84% white. And so that's something to keep in mind as well when we think about you know, how, how applicable these studies are. In general, there was approximately 6.5% you know, body surface area. 
and a distribution between mild, moderate, and severe patients with you know, the vast majority of them being moderate. And because this is of interest you know, for sensitive areas, including intertriginous areas, um, we see here that you know, anywhere 15, 16% of people had intertriginous involvement. And so when we look at those outcomes, we, we should think about um, those numbers as well. And so when we actually look at the outcomes, we see here at the primary endpoint in the reflumolast group, 28% achieved an IgA of zero or one after six weeks compared to only 8% in the vehicle control. And these numbers included with continued treatment at week 12, where we see 38 versus 16%. Perhaps more dramatic, and again, the caveat here is, of course, that these are relatively small numbers, only 15 or 16% with intertriginous involvement. But among those people that did have the involvement, 94% uh, were clear or almost clear uh, at week 12 in terms of their intertriginous involvement versus only one quarter in the vehicle control. Looking at a different outcome, which sometimes is useful given that it's often used in uh, other clinical trials and can at least provide a reference point. So the change in PASI score at week 12, you know, 50 plus percent in the reflumolas uh, group and 17% improvement in the vehicle control. Similarly, we see significantly better responses in terms of patient reported outcomes with the NRS itch score improvement and the change in the PSD. I also do want to highlight the other endpoints, or the time points, I should say, uh, in terms of IgA scores of clear or almost clear. So we see that after two weeks of treatment, really not much of a response. By weeks four or even six, we start seeing an uptick in people achieving clear, almost clear skin with improvement further to week eight, and then somewhat of a plateau at that point compared to week 12. Again, looking at the mean change in PASI, we see a similar trend where at week two, there is some, but not really amazing results, but that improves by week four, where already you know a, a non-trivial percent of patients are seeing results, in, improves further by week six and eight, and kind of plateaus at that point. And the reason I'm highlighting this is that when we think about speaking to patients in terms of how long it will take to see an effect, patients should not expect that after three or four days of treatment, they're going to see a major, major uh, effect but can appropriately you know, consider that the time, range, uh, time frame uh, beyond that, you know, weeks four, six, eight, they can expect to see a result if this is gonna work for them. Then of course, the safety and adverse events is very important to consider because patients want to make sure that they're not uh, experiencing side effects and it's important to counsel them in terms of what they can expect. And so I'm gonna highlight here that in terms of serious adverse events, those that led to discontinuation, very minimal numbers, uh, and in fact, slightly higher in the control group rather than treatment group. There are a number of other treat, uh, uh, side effects that were seen in small numbers, you know, 7%, 4%, 3%, et cetera. But in terms of adverse events that were actually considered to be related to the trial regimen, we see single digit uh, percent. And in terms of individual specific side effects, 2% application site pain, 2% insomnia. These are really minimal side effects and patients can be confident that uh, it's very improbable, at least you know, based on these data, that they will be experiencing uh, side effects. And so to summarize, you know, the, the daily application of reflumolas 0.3% cream is safe and effective for chronic plaque psoriasis. The clinical improvement can be seen at four weeks in some patients with further improvements over the next two to eight weeks. And I think that it's important to set the stage for patients in terms of when they can you know, begin potentially seeing results and, and how long they should continue treatment to see if it works for them. In this small sample, it was very effective for intertriginous areas, which uh, can be very important considering the additional you know, safety considerations when it comes to use of topical corticosteroids in those areas. Overall, I think it's fair to say that there were minimal adverse events. Thank you very much for your attention.